So the big question everyone asks me about my Tesla is, well, how do you charge it? And then, you know, there's some assumptions that you always have to go to a supercharger. Uh, I, I'm always surprised, but then again, I've spent a lot of time reading and researching before I bought the Tesla. So I wanted to make sure I'm sharing with my friends who have asked some of these questions, a real easy answer to how does it charge? How much does it cost? And what about the supercharger, et cetera, et cetera. So if you see my video where I talked about going on a road trip and I talk about using a supercharger, that's a great way to charge it when you're traveling and they work fast, they charge at really super fast speeds, hence the reason they call them superchargers, which is roughly like a 500 miles per hour charge. And that's a easy way to measure charging is miles per hour when the car is parked. And you don't ever think about this when you're filling up a normal fuel based vehicle, petroleum based vehicle, because you're like, well, you put gas in, it takes a few minutes and you're off and running and whatever the range of that car or vehicle is, is the range of that vehicle. You think of it differently when you're in an electric vehicle. And one of the first things is, one, I charge at my office, uh, but you could do the same thing at home. So it no longer becomes a thought about filling it all the way up. Because one, the car has, when you're setting the battery at a healthy, when you're daily driving it, a healthy percentage like 90%. So that gives me roughly 280 something miles of range, roughly right around there. Um, and with 280 miles of range, charging the battery up, uh, I don't go that much every day. So every morning when I get to work, and not even every, I can skip this because I don't drive that much. I only live three miles from my office, and some days I just don't go a lot of places. Uh, but the other day I did. I went about 125 miles visiting clients and going out with some friends afterwards and hitting the Coney Island in Detroit. And by the time it's all said and done, you put 120 miles in the car. Now that is far... Uh, from the car being dead, I can drive it for probably a couple more days without even having to charge it. But conveniently, I've installed the charger at the back of my office right here. And I have this juice box charger, but first we're gonna talk about the Tesla charger and what the differences are. So when you charge it and you're charging it every day, like I said, it becomes not a thought. You know, a lot of my friends just have them in their garage and they pull up in their garage, they plug their car in, and you no longer ever consider any beyond that uh, it was actually my other friend has a different electric car and he just plugs it in his garage every day and that's enough to get him back and forth to work uh, for that car he's got so how do you plug it in well tesla only give gives as far as i know this hasn't changed but when i got my car this is all i got with this stupid 120 volt plug so yeah you can actually plug your tesla into a standard socket um, in a u.s household and uh, sadly it only works at about three miles per hour so they give you the charger for that. I'll show you what the charger looks like here. It's a whole fancy kit they give you. So yes, you do get a charger with the car. This is their like portable mobile charger. And then it adapts with this 120. Now the reason it comes out is because, let me show you. It's got this funky end on it. And this is a NEMA 1450. I had to order this, it's 35 bucks. Rumor has it they used to give these with the car. This is a much better way to charge your car because this, three miles per hour, this, I think it's roughly 30 miles per hour when you plug it in. So this is a 220 volt. I believe this is a 32 amp charger that they give you with the car. So that's gonna charge it, like I said, for every hour sitting, you're gonna gain 30 miles in the car. So if you ran the full 300 mile range of the Tesla Model 3, you would take roughly 10 hours provided you actually manage to get all the way to zero and into your uh, charging spot, wherever you're gonna charge it at. It would take 10 hours to recharge the car. Simple enough. Obviously with three miles per hour, um, this is like an act of desperation. If you had to put some miles on the car and you're somewhere, I keep this in the car just in case somehow through circumstances uh, out of my control, I end up somewhere where I can only charge it with this, but you're gonna wait a long time to get anywhere. So this is a much more ideal way to charge it, but I only bought this to keep it as a spare because you'll find these NEMA 1450s are pretty common. Uh, there's a lot of places. Matter of fact, if you look at using apps like ChargePoint and you look for places, lots of shops that list on ChargePoint, um, which ChargePoint.com is a cool app for help finding charging locations that are not yours. Uh, so if you're traveling and not by a supercharger, but you know this is a plug used for uh, everything from welding equipment compressors and garages uh dryers electric dryers i should say and electric stoves so nothing nothing really funky about that and i keep this whole little kit with the tesla charger put away and in my car hoping not to use it i bought a third party charger now we're going to talk about third party chargers now 
behind me, I have the juice box. This is the juice box uh, 40 amp model, and 40 amps means it'll charge a car at 37 miles per hour. And it doesn't have a Tesla adapter on it. It has the J1772 versus the Tesla adapter. And let me explain the difference. So the J1772 is a common standard for electric vehicle charging. You'll find these all over the place. They're in parking garages. They're anywhere they have an EV parking spot. They generally are going to find this standard of charger. Now Tesla, they charge at a, will have the potential to charge at a much higher wattage. And they went with their own adapters to help facilitate that. And this is what a Tesla adapter is. This is also something you get with the car. Don't lose this. They, they're not cheap. Uh, they're pretty simple. They're just some pins to transfer power, uh, but they'll adapt a J1772 to a standard Tesla adapter. So that's pretty cool. That means you can use any standard charging point with these. And the reason I didn't buy a genuine and they do sell these, you can get a wall mounted uh, Tesla adapter. And it's cool, but it will only charge a Tesla. I wanted the option to charge more than a Tesla. And we're thinking about getting some more electric vehicles, uh, non-Teslas potentially for our office, including some for our text to drive, like maybe a Nissan Leaf. And like I said, it's gonna use the standard J1772 connector. So that gives me more diversity with the juice box. Other advantage with the juice box is, the juice box gives me all kinds of fancy stats because I'm a nerd and I like statistics and it tells me all the details about how much it costs to charge this car because it tells me exactly how many watts or how many kilowatt hours of energy are going into the car. So it's, you know, stats for nerds, stuff I like, and I'm gonna do a separate review on this juice box, but it's pretty cool. Uh, Pretty cool device as far as letting you know all that and because i just pop this on there plug this in charge the car really easy now how did we hook any of this up well you can hardline a juice box in you can hardwire this right to your uh, system they have one i purposely ordered the one with that standard nema 1450 plug that we see right here so i have it plugged in here i usually have a little lock this is funny when I'm plugging it or messing with it or sticking something in there because this is on the back of my office. And yes, we have cameras. Yes, we watch things. But, you know, keep, keep the people out. But I have the lock out of it. Uh, make it, you know, so I can get to this and show you. But this was not hard to install. Please, if you're dealing with high voltage, get a great electrician to this. Don't uh, do it yourself unless you're really confident that you won't uh, destroy something, destroy yourself or burn the house down, burn the building down, etc., etc. Uh, we are lucky. This is where our mains come in and it goes through this wall and right next to it is the box. And we just had to pop a hole right through the cement here and come through with the heavy gauge wire and it was really easy to install so this was actually a pretty easy install for us because literally my electrical box is just on the other side of this wall so once you have it installed and we weather sealed this really good you can buy this i'll leave a link where you can get an amazon or you can buy these at lowe's home depot there's nothing strange about this plug overall i think like the plug and the uh, job box uh, electrical box and the sealant and everything where well, this is like a $60 project maybe 65 bucks worth of parts to make all this happen uh, it doesn't cost a whole lot to make to put this part in and then with the juice box and the reason I have it plugged in the juice box was kind of expensive this is a little over $500 for the juice box because I wanted all the stats you can go with some of the cheaper chargers but the juice box is super solid super heavy gauge wire like really really nice and this you're here in a metal box so if something were to go horrifically wrong with the charging circuits in here, then the juice box would uh, protect itself. And my, my understanding is these are like just a solid, solid box and well-performed. Uh, I read a lot of reviews. I'm going to review it specifically to talk about the stats on it. But as far as like construction and design, solid device. Now, the reason I didn't hardline it and back to why I plugged it in was that way if I ever need to, I have my backup charger. So in the event that something bad happens to the juice box, or if I wanna try a different charger, I can just use the standard NEMA 1450 plug and swap a different plug or use my actual Tesla charger. So I'm not stuck not being able to charge the car. But this is the next question, and this is where stats come in. How much does it cost to charge? Well, I'm still working on a couple details with DTE, but let's go at the higher rate that they charge um, for a commercial business, which I think is 16 cents for kilowatt hour. I'll leave stats, but it's uh, DTE is the energy company that is in the Detroit area that we're in. Roughly though, I figured that 300 miles is like $11, $12 to 
charge the car, that's when you're charging at that peak energy price. If you do off peak, and by the way, that's another advantage of the juice box here, you can program it to only charge off peak or trickle charge, there's a lot of different options on there. Generally, you just leave it at full charge and tell it don't charge between these hours. It's got some, when I do my review of it, I'll dig into some of the uh, details of how that works, but you know, peak in, according to DTE, peak energy is between three and 7 p.m. And that is when they charge you a higher rate. They charge you less to operate it at night. So if you're someone like a lot of my friends who have this in their garage, uh, have a charging set up, they're not even home till after seven, so they don't even have a thought about it. They just plug the car in. And even if you have it set to not even turn on till after seven and you plug the car in before then, the car will just start charging when it clicks on. So it saves you a lot of money that way because they go in DTE's rate um, for residential goes from 15 cents at peak hours to only six cents. So now you're talking about filling this car up for like, you know, $5 uh, or less to give a full 300 mile range. But generally as on a, on the daily, uh, because of maybe, you know, like a, a busy day is a hundred something miles for me, a slower day is like 20 or 30 miles of driving, going and visiting customers. Or if I don't visit anyone, I only drive three miles uh, two here from my house and three miles back and I wouldn't even why bother charging it because it you know six miles barely move the battery any on, on this uh, model three so it's pretty easy though you just show up you charge it every day so you don't think of it in the same way like you would I have to stop and fill up or inconvenient um, obviously there's a few factors you need to consider one you know do you have a spot to put it at your house uh, someone had commented that they live in apartments and it's just not feasible for them and that would be correct unless you can uh, coerce the apartment owner to put in this uh, charging system yeah that may be a problem a lot of parking garages though like in downtown Detroit have been outfitted with them and I've seen this be uh, more and more common where a lot of places have it which is kind of cool so if you live in an area like that uh, awesome so it's another consideration when you're buying an electric car is where you're gonna plug it in we also uh, someone brought up an interesting I didn't think of this but yes you can get an extension cord and really long cords for this but uh, there's a few areas where the older parts of the city have no driveways everyone has to park in front of their house uh, you can get an electrician to bury a line and bring it out in the front this whole uh, the juice box all waterproof watertight um, so is this so you can build a structure and matter of fact my friend for his other businesses he has uh, he owns several commercial properties and they have installed these chargers in the parking lot so they did the burial and brought it all the way out to the parking lot and they have essentially their own little stations using these juice boxes set up and i've been there and it's kind of cool so i can visit him uh, as a customer and charge my car while I'm there for essentially free. And the reason a lot of these places give it away for free is when you put in a few EV chargers, let's say you're a restaurant, you're a, or even our uh, grocery store down the street, they know you're only there for an hour or so, and you're only gonna put in X amount of Watts in that hour, and it's only gonna cost them a couple dollars but the draw of bringing people and you can run the stats on this people who can afford an electric car probably spend a little bit more money i don't have that as an official stat but just generally speaking when you have uh enough money to buy the car hopefully you have enough money left over to you know stop at a nice restaurant so we're seeing more places uh offer that as an amenity it's kind of cool to be able to charge your car there it's it's more novel than it is uh necessary i would say though because we, when you talk about it only charging at you know 30 or so miles per hour depending on what type of charger they put in you're also talking about i'm going there for an hour so i guess it's cool i get 37 more miles added to my car it may or may not been necessary but i think the concept is there and as we get more of these uh, places doing it suddenly you just don't think about it and you charge your car wherever you end up and i love the fact that it's in the parking garages in a lot of areas like in downtown detroit because there you are usually there for a while when i was uh, doing some talks at the wayne state can take my car plug it in at the EV spot at the Wayne State parking garage uh, for the university and I'm usually there for three or four hours that's enough to completely charge the, for the drive there enough to fill the car up for the way back and uh, it's just part of the parking in the garage that I don't pay any more you still got to pay to park in the garage but you don't pay any more to park your EV in the garage and they got designated parking spots for you which is kind of cool but like I said in the future I'll do a review on the uh, juice box and more details and all the stats it has which is really cool but charging it's not that hard uh, charging is very inexpensive uh, relatively 
speaking to petrol. And I want to eventually I'll do a video where I dive into the more detailed stats of why that is, because uh, there's a lot of numbers involved in it. And it's uh, really interesting to me because it comes down to the efficiency of the way electricity is used versus the efficiency of the way a petroleum is used. Because not everybody realizes a petroleum car wastes almost 80% of the burning of the fuel as heat as opposed to turning it into rotational driving force. Uh, one that speaks to the volumes of power that is within gasoline, uh, but it also speaks to the fact that, yeah, you just waste a lot of heat with a car, so the potential energy is being wasted versus there's a whole steps of energy conversion that are just a lot more efficient uh, with electric vehicles. But <clears throat> other than that, uh, I'm gonna plug my car in and get back to work and edit this video and upload it.